Metallica dropped a new song today called Screaming Suicide. Pretty good. This new era of Metallica, James Hetfield never really got the credit he deserved for being as good of a singer as he is. He gets overlooked. But the older he gets, the better he sounds, the more pronounced he gets. I think we're still giving away tickets for that Detroit show, by the way. They're doing that big M72 tour. The album didn't drop till May, I don't think, but then they're doing that um, Friday night, Sunday night run where they do uh, stadiums and two shows each city, different opening acts, different uh, set lists. So I think if you go to WMMS.com, it's still there. They're not playing Cleveland, so um, we're sending people to Ford Field in Detroit next fall. Everybody telling me, blow me up on the text here, 35192. The word I was looking for was not husk. It was hull. The hull Hull? of the piece of popped corn. That's precisely what I was trying to Mm. think of. Thank you. The hull. I was, I had two of the letters right. But, um, and people also telling me that drive-ins, summertime are booming too. Well, the Autorama has never stopped showing movies, right? <clears throat> that's been going since I came here. I'm sure it was going way before that. That was mine and Brian's second first date. Was what were the movies? Um, Jaws and Jurassic Park. Oh. It was like a throwback night. I was going to say, not first run. No. Mm. Yeah, no, we haven't been dating <laughs> since I was three. No. <laughs> I would think that that would get him in some kind of trouble with law enforcement if that were the well, case. He'd be what? He would have been five or six. Uh, he is three years older than me. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah, it would have been a three-year-old dating a six-year-old, so that's okay. Gross. <laughs> hey, you can't... You can't hurry love, man. You don't know when it's going to happen. You know? It's going to happen for pound cake at some point. I don't know, man. I don't... I think I'm going to be one of those gays that are just older and happy with being gay. Like mm-hmm. have have my own condo, have my apartment. Like there's... you'll you'll revert back to the 1920s definition of gay, hiding in the shadows. But I wouldn't be just hiding. Happy. In the, I would just be openly gay. But I don't think I, I don't know if I'm the marriage type. I like my freedom too much. I like being alone. Man, I am not gay. I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. Yeah, Ice T, you tell him. Like there, there's a hot guy around here. He's older, uh, and oh, thank you. A, a hot older gay, um, and he's single. And yay! He, I don't, I don't know if he, he's into like younger guys or why he never married. But I always think about that. I'm like, he he has more than enough opportunity to get married, and he just doesn't. So I'm, I imagine being a single life. Living the single life is a lot better. Maybe your life will be like one of those movies that they make with all the older single women, right? You're Diane Keaton. You're Jane Fonda. You're Lily Tomlin. They all start a book club, and then they have amazing adventures. Maybe your life will be like that. You'll just be an older gay man with a group of peers, and nobody's worried about, uh, you know, anything. Yeah. You got a little bit of money in your pocket. Now, that will be a completely different life than you had envisioned for yourself. Yeah, but I don't know. <clears throat> Beyond this career, the rest of my life, I really didn't have planned out. I, when I was, uh, like, a teenager, I thought I would, well, a wife and kids. But then after the whole gay thing happened, I was like, I think I could probably have a kid. And then now that I'm older, I'm like, I have no interest in having kids. And it breaks my mom's heart because she really wants me to have a child. And I just, I have no interest in having kids. I feel like if I met the right dude or maybe if I had like a really good friend who she wanted to have a kid, she just later on in life, her clock is ticking and she's like. Yeah, but the pressure's still off because your brother has kids. I don't understand why your mom's still up your ass. Because I don't have one, right? My but still, has like, to do with if, me. if she was, if she had no grandchildren, I get it. But my mom has twelve 
grandchildren. I'm the only one without like that hasn't birthed a child, and she tells me all the time how I need to have a kid. Yep. Like, what do you need more grandkids for? You have twelve. She doesn't. She's a hoarder. I bet she, she wants more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grandkids. I bet she doesn't even know all their names. Yes. Dopey, Sneezy, Doc, Sloopy, Sloopy. Hang on, <laughs> I'm coming. Yeah. So, I didn't even think anything beyond this career path. So I don't know if I still, still want to have kids. Uh, so I try not to think about it because it really kind of stresses me out. Hmm. Well, I think that you will find someone wherever you go next. I don't think it's going to be here. I don't think I, I'll I'll be okay without getting married, but I really want a wedding. <laughs> I just I don't want to not have just that experience. Throw a party. You can just take ten grand and throw a party. Throw the big. If you can't throw, you know, a, a wedding party, is just a party. You're that's MC what I'm weddings. You see this firsthand. You're going to be able to get all that. kinds of solid intel from people take this summer us. when you go back and are MCing again. Save up five thousand dollars and throw a kick ass party and celebrate. Life, and wear a dress if you want. I was gonna say, well, what would it? What would the party be celebrating? Like I, you, I want to. I I am having a good life, and I would like my friends to come have a party with a me. Cody Don't Cotillion. But what do you? I think? can't make it that day. <laughs> I'm busy then. But <laughs> even if it's an open bar, I'll be there. <laughs> what um? What do you think a wedding is? I know it's what the bride. Is. It's it's the bride's day. It's a celebration of her. It's celebrating. Any celebration union. of the groom. It's celebrating, celebrating the union of two love. families. That's the subtext. It's not called. It's not called. Uh, the show is not called Unionzilla. But I like. It's called Bridezilla. It's not called Groomzilla. Mm-hmm. The show is called Bridezilla. I the reason that. that that's the term. I like doing weddings because I like the the setup of the wedding. I like everyone's so pretty and it's a very joyous occasion. Like two families are coming together and all everyone's high school friends comes. Like I like that environment. There's nothing happier than a wedding. For one day out of the year, everyone just forgets their troubles. I've never had an incident where, you know, stuff got out of hand. It's to one day. You get one day because everyone knows how much money people spend on this thing. Cody, do you know how many weddings I've cried at? How many weddings I've thrown up at or tried to hook up with a married groomsman? It's not, I think that you're romanticizing the idea of it. Yeah. But you can just throw a party and say, hey guys, I'm throwing a party. I want everyone to dress up. There's a black tie. It's a black Mary, tie event. You were, out right. yester- you were out yesterday when I said, and I Gwen wouldn't... and I will have sex in the bathroom. See? I don't care if people I'll are getting married or not. That's right. You were out yesterday, Mary, when I said that I wouldn't even buy, if I had extra money, I wouldn't even buy first class because I'm cheap. So you want me to throw a party just because I want to throw a party? If you want, if it sounds like you want to have a party. You're like, I want to have a wedding. I want to have that fun, loving day where everybody has a great time. So then just throw a party. All right. So I take back the whole re- rejecting a proposal. I want to accept the proposal and then get married, but then our marriage license somehow just doesn't go through. You want a party so that have someone a else doesn't pays go for. through? <laughs> what do you mean? Like you're trying to get married in Kentucky Ooh, or what? Wait, can we, do you want someone to stand up for the wedding and. Say like when they say no, not stand me up. No, no, not stand you up, but like object to the wedding. No, forever hold your peace Mm -hmm. card. No, I want like I don't think they do that much anymore. The wedding. I mean, if it's what he wants, I'm gonna do it. Oh, I see. Yeah, write it into the script. Pound cake's not able to attend my wedding. It's gonna be a a Cody affair with someone else. Pound cake is not there for that night. It's a Cody (laughs) affair. It's a Cody. People want to know if um. All of the Santora grandkids have their own storage units. Uh, not that I know of. Oh, okay. It's There's not just, like a stocking assuming, stuffer or something? No, I think that they probably have items in their parents' storage units, but I don't think she I don't think she has seven. Oh, your siblings stores. all have them too? Yes. I told you that. And she told I, me. No, you told you you said that you were going to inherit your mom's. No, she, she has, has one for each no, of them. I've, I've said that she has a storage unit specifically for each child with things in it right. for each child. Right. That's pretty neat, though. That's pretty organized. But, but those that's are organized chaos. What I'm saying is, but that's still all on, under her, like, watchful eye, right? They don't go in and grab stuff out of the storage units. No, we don't get it till she dies. That's what we I'm saying, right? They, they're not putting dies. their things in the. You we know, are. Uh, we have nothing you, to do with it. We don't even know. She said they're all in different cities. We're gonna end up different on a cities. Treasure hunt after this. <laughs> Yours is in Tacoma. No, around Ohio. But oh, well, that's no fun. Uh, you'll be bequeathed. Yeah. Uh, like a beaver fart pill. Mm. Uh, you'll be bequeathed the storage unit. Yes. That's funny. Mm. Alan, marriages and funerals are the biggest waste of money. Well, those are huge industries. There's a reason for that. I got about 150 pairs of shoes that say 
there's better there's other ways to waste your money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that many shoes. Uh-huh. Right. Funerals, but I love it. Funerals, I don't know why people spend so much. Like, the, 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 I don't know where all because the money goes. Because it's expensive. But I'm saying the the, the coffin. It, it, I can understand why that would be expensive, and well, maybe it's the like skates that make it expensive. But I would say the the limo ride. But what what else? What are you getting at? Whose wedding is or whose funeral is so unique where you need to spend thirty thousand dollars? Like unless you're well, not thirty thousand dollars, but I mean, m- when we buried my father, and my father had let his life insurance lapse when he got sick because his thought was, well, nobody will insure me now, so there was no life insurance money. So we all had to basically pay for, we all had to pool and and kick in and pay for my dad's funeral. And we went, because my dad would have uh, strangled each one of us had we spent a lot of money on the funeral. It's not a big thing. But you go in and you're, even if you want like a base level coffin, it's a lot of money. And then based on what state you're in, this was Illinois, you have to pay for the vault. You have to pay for the plot. Oh, so you got to pay for the headstone. You got to pay, pay, for pay them to dig the hole. You got to like, pay to use the church. You got to, it's everybody, yes, it's very expensive. So when people go, just burn me up and put me in an urn, that is literally the cheapest way and that's you still can a go about thousand dollars. <laughs> right. Yeah, It'd be nice they, if you could just say, throw me in the ground, cheap. cover me with wet, wet mud. That's all I need. I don't need anything. The right amount of wet. Yeah. But, Let me um, go into my great reward. Right, because the same place selling you the coffins is selling you the urns, and they don't want to lose money. So they're like, oh, you just want an urn? Uh, that'll be $4,000. You want to be in a nice urn? I don't care. Put me in a coffee can. can Chock we, full of nuts. Mm-hmm. Can we please rewind for one second that Cody called a hearse a limo? Well, there is a limo, though. There is a limo. There's Who's a limo. There's a limo. The family. The family's family. in the limo. You've never been to oh. a black, is that a, is that a black funeral? No. Thing? Not only. No, I've been, I've been I've in funerals. I've never that, yeah. seen a limo it, at a funeral. It used to be a thing. That that was like some of our, our family members used to, so they've never. Now, been. a hearse is a corpse limo, I to guess. your point. Yeah. <laughs> it's a limo for the coffin. Sure. <laughs> yeah. We've never had someone fight at a wedding, but we've had people fight at funerals. Well, yeah, because everybody's like emotional. But like we've over stupid stuff. Like, man, why y'all get to ride in limo? Y'all ain't even y'all ain't even take care of when she was in the hospital. And then somebody comes out, and says, you got something to say, you ain't even tip in for the funeral. Like everyone's fighting. And then I'm like, I get to ride in the limo. Well, plus, because somebody was texting me, Alan, I DJ'd a wedding in Warren once where the groom and three quarters of the wedding party all got arrested for fighting each other because somebody found out that the best man had diddled the bride. Hey. Whoa. But here's the thing. Fighting at a wedding, everybody's, I'd pay to go to that wedding. everybody's drunk and things like that can happen. Fighting at a funeral, people are upset, they're grieving. There's, you know, the wedding thing, I always chalk that up to being drunk. Yeah. Fighting at a funeral, everybody's already sad and angry and Emotional. whatever. Yes. I was not a, a very nice person after my dad died. Like, I was, I have had to apologize to my mom because I was particularly mean to her because she was like, very, very emotional, and I was like, you're making this whole thing about you, blah, 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 not thinking like, yeah, well, she was married to the guy for 25 years, you know, like, right. now that you're a couple years removed, so I was just being rude to everyone. I was like, Dad, like, everyone was like, my older brother, he went on this, like, tirade of these posts of how amazing my dad was and how he was this beautiful role model and all these things, and I straight up was like, who was your dad? Because this is not, our dad was a gambler and a liar and an addict and he stole money from people. Like, what are you He was a rogue. About? Yeah. And everyone's like, why are you going to talk about dad like that? I'm like, I want to know whose dad you had. But Well, yeah, a lot was, of people subscribe to that whole don't speak ill of the dead thing. But I'm also not going to go on Facebook and make up a person who didn't exist. Right. You know? Well, if people grieve differently. Isn't that what they say? Yeah. I have still, I've come to the conclusion that I still have not dealt with my dad dying and i don't know when that's gonna happen it's gonna happen probably when your mom starts dating bill shut up (laughs) i'm just trying to help shut up bill (laughs) (laughs) so yeah i have not dealt with that so you know people don't picture my dad came up today in my in my you know, your iPhone, the memories or whatever, the thing, not Facebook. What do you like, mean dealt with it, though? Like, what do you, what do you I think? I haven't, you're... I mean, other than the initial emotional components of being there with him when he died and, 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 and crying at the funeral and things like that, I have not processed the fact 
that my dad is dead. I know that. I know that I haven't. We were watching some show, and I know it's going to come at weird times, but we were watching some show, and, God, oh, it was the Weird Al movie. I, like, start crying in the Weird Al movie when his dad finally cops to where he brings out the book. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And Weird Al Yankovic's like, wow, I didn't really know my dad at all. And I start getting really upset because I'm like, I didn't really know. I mean, I love my dad. And I mean, we had as good of a relationship as you could have. But my dad was kind of an impenetrable guy, right? He was an engineer and a man of science and all that kind of thing. So I have, you know, I got to say what I got wanted to say to him at the end and all that kind of stuff. That's great. But I don't, because I'm not an emotional person, but I assume... Some things you can't outrun them, so but it might just not happen either. That's true no, that's too. Not, no, that's not true. I well, don't believe that it's, for one second. It's true that it might not happen. I also don't believe that that's going to be the case. But he's I right; it know. might not happen. There were people. So um, I'd started grief therapy just a couple months after my dad died because I was having such a hard time. But there were people in my grief therapy group who were talking about loved ones who had passed five, seven, ten years prior. And they were kind of saying the exact same thing you were saying, Alan, where they're like, I didn't realize until five years down the road that I have a ton of unresolved emotions that I've never dealt with, that I kind of just thought, oh, my dad's dead and I moved on from it. So that can happen too, where there were, you know, however long it takes for you to get to the point where you're ready to process it. But I believe eventually you will process it. I guess. It just takes people different amounts of time. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, you want to hear uh, another one of Jenna's voicemails? I mean, it you seems want some like more an appropriate nothings? time for it. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. All right. It's time for Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. Amy watches kid shows and she plays with herself. This has been Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. So I'm going to keep an eye on Amy, whoever that is. I didn't know uh-huh. that Bluey was referring to balls. That's crazy. <laughs> well, drop, San um, Diego. <laughs> Mary Santora, <laughs> San Diego County. Get ready. <laughs> Debbie, one of our bureau chiefs. He's out there in Carlsbad, just north of downtown. Go see Mary Santora tonight. Mic drop. Hey, baby, baby. Comedy. Is this a room or a club or what is it? A club. Oh. A club. She's working with her buddy Bobby. Oh, that's, yeah, okay, right. Oh, Bobby Kelly's headlining. Claremont Mesa Boulevard. Yes. All right. It is, I'm staying much closer to the radio station this time, which is nice. It's mm-hmm. only like seven minute drive from where I'm at. All right. Which is good. What kind of rental card you get? Uh, I don't know, a little one. A one little of the ones one. It doesn't have a center council. So every time I go to get in, I go to put my arm on it and I fall. <laughs> It's so. I mean, it doesn't matter because I'm only driving it for a couple days. You know what I mean? So it's like whatever's cheapest, I'll take that. Right. But, but... I, you forget. I just didn't realize that that's how I get into cars. Is I get in, I lean on the center council, put my stuff where it needs to go. Because like the last couple times I've gotten in, I've went to go lean and completely there's nothing there for me to put my arm on. Hmm. All right. Robert Kelly. There it is. Well, they could have at least uh, had the courtesy to uh, put you in as something. Yeah. They didn't even know I was supposed to be there. Andrew There's Dice so Clay many, is there next weekend. Yeah, so many of these clubs, they don't like now more than ever. They should be advertising the opening acts because Mary's got a good following on social media. So if it means they sell ten more tickets, that's worth it to put up a a, a few more pixels on the website, which costs go. them nothing. Catherine Blandford. That's what I was supposed to feature. I was going to say. That was last night. Mm-hmm. Well, she's funny. Yeah, very funny. Um, I've got a break here. If you want to send a text for something, get me at 35192. I will have those Pussifer tickets for you if you want to see Maynard Keenan and company. Uh, the day after they do Sonic Temple. They're going to do that on Saturday, the 27th, there in Columbus. And then they will come up here to do their own thing out at MGM Northfield Park on May the 28th. So I'll get a couple of those tickets set aside for you. And then another chance for you to grab some money. Coming up at 4.30. Another keyword, $1,000 for you to go fund yourself. This is The Alan Cox Show. Everyone.